Uh, what we're going to work with right now, Tom, uh, Bruce is going to draw out uh, the privy yard here and all the features that we know about right now and measure where they're at. Kevin, you might have to help him get that pop. Yeah, I will. That's a pile of soda. Yeah. I'll tell you what, it's cold this morning. It's just colder though, huh? shells a lot of times mean uh, that it's French. The French really liked oysters. So in the fill, the Germans didn't like oysters as much. So in the later or the uh, uh, later privies we'll find very few oyster shells. So I see oyster shells in the fill. There's also a piece of full blue china right there. That's real early. privies over here, two of which have already been dug, uh, one stone liner and a uh, wood lined outhouse, or a cistern rather. Uh, Kurt over here is digging in a brick cistern, testing the age of it around the very top fill. And we can tell it's a cistern because it's round and it's got mortar lining on the inside of it. So that uh, a privy would be uh, bricks without any mortar between them or mortar splash on the inside because they wanted the stuff to seep out. Yeah, okay, here's a here's what you call your first crown top So This is around a 1900 crown top. Uh, we took the asphalt off and then the gravel off and then there was about 18 inches of fill and when you took that off, it's all clay, you know, around. And there's so many different disturbances here. There are either cisterns, which are, were for water storage, or privies. Uh, and there's probably six different, in this little space, there's six different features. We're gonna go ahead and take probes and probe and find where all the features shovel, are and identify them. Shovel probes, is that shovel what Shovel test probe, yeah. Well, what I'm gonna do is try to figure out where, where exactly this cistern is, here it is. You can tell. Here's the cistern right here. How, what are you? I'm hitting the wall of it. Okay. Okay, so the wall, is, this is the wall right here. So what we want to do is basically clean off the top of it, you know, down to the top to, brick. Yeah. Okay, try here it see. is here, you see? So it's curving around. It's a curving. It's, it's round. Like, With the probe, we can tell if we're in virgin ground or uh, hard clay ground or if we've got some kind of a feature. And it appears as if this cistern might be the only feature in this corner. As we're going this way, it's just clean clay, nothing, no disturbance. Piece of pottery. Do we need to have a little bucket to, for vines? Yeah, well, what you could do, there's the buckets right there. Whiskey crock, or whiskey. Uh, yeah, see their jug or crock. Okay. Hopefully it's got the... Uh, That's just got to be dug by hand there. I could dig a hole next to it. We'll let them uh, take it out. We're going to get somebody for recording purposes. Yeah, uh, that was supposed to be Tommy. He's supposed to be here. I guess I could take over. 
It's a crock. Uh, here, where we thought this was a uh, cistern, because the walls were mortared, uh, now with uh, Gary Singer's uh, digging around the edge of this and, and exposing it better, uh, now we think what it is is a privy indeed, which is what we'd expect to find here. And uh, uh, cisterns are mostly round. This is more uh, oblong shape, so it's probably going to be a, a rounded, uh, oval-shaped brick liner. Uh, and the reason why it's squared off in the corner right here where Gary's working is because these, this has got a mortared wall up high where, where privies aren't mortared up high. This one's mortared and it's probably because it had a brick outhouse on top of it. And so for a, a masonry feature like a brick outhouse, you'd have to have a stout foundation. So when we get down in the ground, this will go from being mortared bricks, if this is a privy, to being just bricks laid one on top of the other. Once again, so that the stuff can leach out. We're going to start locating features and measuring off of this railroad trestle here on the lot. You'll see that the railroad trestles set at an odd angle to the street, Broadway and Fifth Street. And so, uh, while this is an imperfect drawing that I've got here, we're going to get an as-built drawing from the railroad showing the existing railroad trestles as they are, and we're going to measure off of the trestle and find the distance between the trestle and our features, and then we're going to map the size and depth of the features. So this is the mortared top bricks of the feature that we have over here we just talked about and then there's going to be an oval on the inside of it and as we get into the ground we'll find that that oval becomes unmortared bricks if it is a brick privy. What we want to do we're going to we're going to name these uh, privies uh, Tom and Bruce are going to work and we'll give them a, we'll assign them a, a letter and what we'll need to do is paint on that bucket which we're going to put on the bucket which layer this is and which feature it is. You don't want to throw we don't want to, we want to throw the fill a little further away in case we have to go for it back. Look at this guy, it's a dowel head. Oh no, where's the dowel? Damn. So, so that's what those were, dowel heads, all those Yeah. Things. So and we got, we want to, we want to save, up. yeah, we want to save all of this stuff. You know, one thing that, one thing that we want to show Kurt here is the amount of stuff. I mean, that's important. But the bones and everything from each layer, we want to save everything. This is the lot here that we're dealing with. And this is Gratiot Street. It used to be called Mulberry. But it's here, and then Sear, C-E-R-R-E -R -R -E, is down here. This is Broadway or 4th Street, and this is 5th Street. So uh, what we're looking at, we're working in this area right here. This is where the trestle comes through. And you can see the house is facing away from us. They're facing the west out this direction. Here's the houses in front, and then you see the additions to the house. And the, the houses are so uh, big here that you can't see this yard area in between them, but there is a big space in here where we're digging now. And uh, you see the houses are all different sizes and shapes. This is a very old area, so there's no telling you know, how many. That's why you see how, as many uh, features close together as you do there, because there wasn't that much yard area. So now I'm going to start digging with the backhoe and I'm going to uh, go ahead and test dig into the brick line privy and I'm actually going to dig a hole next to it and we're going to sweep all of the uh, fill out of the privy and into the hole next to it and look at it and then I'll take the backhoe and uh, move it out of our way. This is, uh, this is actually between the foundation wall that held up the house and there's pottery coming out of it. There was a bunch of houses uh, shown on the map. What was this right here? It was a privy yard. There's a little pink on there. Look at this. See the next layer of sandy? It's got the toe, brown toe, black shoe. Uh huh. That's in pretty Which good shape. Yeah. Is there a bottom? Yeah. They knew the last thing was destroyed and uh, they had to be dug, you know, it's like 6 o'clock at night. Let's pull a guard. That's it.
about Coral, Coral of St. Louis, 1875. Now this book was was written, uh, or I should say drawn, by people floating over the city in balloons. And uh, if you can imagine, to, to commemorate the building of the East Bridge, this book was commissioned. And uh, the Mercantile Library has the original plates, and they were carved in stone. Yeah. And uh, Todd McGraw republished this book. Uh, and this is my working copy here. Whenever we dig, I mark in here in this book where we've dug. This was an ethnic neighborhood. It was originally a French area, and then it became a German area, and then it became a, uh, I'm trying to think of the, uh, the name of the group of people, St. Raymond's Church is uh, uh, founded, or basically... Uh, it's not Lebanese or... Lebanese, Lebanese. thank you. Lebanese. Very good, I'm impressed. Here's the uh, cathedral here. Okay. Uh, so look at how packed the arch grounds was. And you know, obviously all that is, well, it's not necessarily all gone. Now, some uh, people, some historians assume that it's all gone, but I've, I've found differently. I found that a lot of it is still there. So they destroyed parts of it, but there's all over St. Louis, there's a tremendous amount of archeological uh, uh, features that are buried in the ground that just haven't come to light. And unless people really start to look for it, then uh, all this information will be lost. So the city museum is doing a fantastic job. We're going to take one of these outhouses, the most interesting one, and uh, maybe one that has some ethnicity to it. <laughs> and uh, we're going to rebuild it in the city museum. And we're going to do a huge display. There's already a small display of my collection of things that I found in St. Louis over the last 10 years. This is nothing to laugh at. No. No. People get a grin on their face when they hear that you're digging a bathhouse. I, I've done 50 interviews across the country in the last week uh, from radio stations where the disc jockey has picked up the paper. It went out on the AP wire. And uh, I, I don't know how many cities uh, carried the story in their paper, but I've gotten calls from all over the place. And, you know, oddly enough, I was really expect I was expecting to be panned. And uh, it didn't happen. All these people, you know, uh, I had a couple of, uh, uh, in Chicago, one of the radio stations, uh, there was two ladies, and uh, the one was kind of panning me, and the other one, I could hear her hitting the other one on the shoulder, you know. That's not funny. We need, this is important because, what are we finding out about ourselves when we dig out? And you don't know until you, unless you try, you know. Rips going around here. Easy, easy. easy. Dig more. Uh, 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 uh. Uh-oh, what's happening? <laughs> yeah. We do have women present and the cameras are rolling. That's a bad difference, three guys. All right! Oh! Holy cow! Oh, look at that! Oh, hey! What is it? Is it a chamber pot? Yeah. Uh, this is about 1880, 1870, something like that. But and that's, So that's dropped quite a bit in age. And in that bucket there, he's got buttons. Uh, so they threw their clothes in there and the clothes rotted, but the buttons survived. And as they get down now in this hole, I believe what we're gonna find is shoes. And so the people that lived here, we find their shoes. You can tell if it was a big person or a small person. Or so do you go from buttons to hooks and eyes? Is that the you, progression? Oh, you can you find it all. You weren't on TV like that, were you? Yeah, I was. You found it. It's just decomposed and there's nothing you know, it's got some sand and, you know, uh, different, this would grow wonderful vegetables, but it's really not uh, disgusting like you might think. It's just, you know, it's composed it completely. Yeah, a little bit. Yeah. Just pull it right out of there. You gotta get the ladder. Loaded. It goes. It goes for at least two more feet. It could, you know. And I don't really want to probe and break something. Here's a dowel. Is she right her head there. missing? Head's missing. It's a. It's yeah. kind of like a frozen Charlotte. Yeah. Oh. Wine bottle. A wine bottle. That's an olive oil See, one this, earlier. This is a hole where somebody had those bad habits. This is a vice hole. Yeah. This is a vice hole. <laughs> this is probably a fun guy. We can tell this guy was a fun guy. Tell Lark. us what you think by just by looking at his vices here. Uh, he ate a lot. He drank a lot. He he wasn't constipated. 
For, for some reason, he threw a big rock down there. <laughs> I'm thinking his wife threw it at him. You out there drinking again? <laughs> yeah, that's a Civil War. This has just gotten older. That's a Civil War age flask. You see the eagle on it? It's got a Late historic 60s, eagle on it. Late 60s, early 70s. You were still right. It's not pottled, but see, he, not pottled. You hear him Great calling? I'm impressed. Great bottle. Great bottle. Ooh, so this is nice. the old eagle. Uh, I'll tell you what, we ought to make Whoa. this. What's period? We can change, uh, Civil, like Civil War. Give me a time. Civil War, 1860s. Second grade or what? Yeah. Oh, he's going to like this. It's a crude. I can tell you genuinely. Oh, I am. That's a uh, cough syrup, a Mrs. W Mrs. Winslow's soothing syrup. Did they just pull that out? Yeah. Oh, nice. It's not even chips. Oh, we got another one just right. like that, don't we? Ooh, ooh, what's that? I'm talking to them. Oh, uh, that's shaving mug. Is that metal? Is that yeah, that's uh, nice. copper luster. That's gold in them, they are shit. That's the only gold we found, so. No, we found some. Joe Blow. Sure keeps on going. I, I would assume most of that gold leaf you see on some of those plates. Oh, it gold. sure oh, is. Well, yeah, luster. but. It's, uh, oh, is that beautiful? Out of the way. Anybody got this? Magic Marshall. Oh, that looks good. Is this 10 still, or what is it? Yeah, it's 10. Wow. It says old rye. Oh. oh. Unbelievable. Easy. Don't crap that one. That's not good. You're not going to get too many much better bottles out of an unpottled hole. Yeah, just look at that because you'll never see that yes, again. Sir. Yes, sir. <laughs> I know I won't be allowed to touch it. <laughs> and, and so, what's that symbol? Is it a. It's a minor. See the bottom still, Kurt? See the bottom right there? Yeah. That might be the pick of the litter there. Perfect. I wonder if there's any more down there. Yeah. Broken <laughs> hostas. Can we have about ten of those, please? Broken hostas. Look at the color of it. Oh yeah. We did find a comb. Yeah, now. Yeah. Excuse me. That's sophisticated. I'm sophisticated. Yeah. Dude, look at the bottom of that bottle there, Steve. Turn that over and look at that. Yeah, that's a pommel there. Yeah, it's a little Pittsburgh, uh, Pennsylvania. They were something at the same time. Uh, <laughs> that's on the uh, little Did he read it or did he didn't know what he was? I think he did. I can't, can't, can't see what it is. Pretty awesome, huh? It is. That says Chapman, or it's... Is that what it says? Yeah, What's the other side say? It looks well, see, like this malt is, this or something? This is a soldier. I can't remember what the other side says. Baltimore. Baltimore. Yeah, it's a Baltimore flask. That's pretty. Yeah, this is a dancer, and then this is a soldier. Can't hardly tell by looking at it, though, no, can it's, you? It's yeah, almost it's like it's warm. 18, 1850. Hey, princess. It's in pretty good shape, really. I'll tell you what, that'll that'll clean up mint. That'll look good in the museum. But then when you take a look at the map and you see how many of these outhouses were packed in this little area, and look look at the size space we're talking about here, and look at the amount of artifacts that are buried in this little area. And can you imagine how much stuff is in St. Louis buried? It's unbelievable. It was a, a case of cooperation between uh, corporations and uh, uh, a little museum that's uh, uh, it's going to turn out to be something that's going to be absolutely spectacular. And it's kooky at the same time, and I think that's a lot like the museum. If you've ever been to the city museum, no, it's yet. kooky. Oh, so, uh, this is, uh, this is going to be, it's going to fit right in. Uh, oh my god, I'll tell you what. Oh, that's pretty cool. Yeah, And I can just grab it by the neck here in a second, which I might as well do. It's the expensive film there. And, and it's burg, it's good. Very nice.
perfect bottle. Very nice. Is it the one you thought it was? Jay Heist, St. Louis. Now was that a liquor bottle? Uh, whiskey, a ale, ale or a whiskey, I'm not real sure. Great. <coughs> Very historical bottle and valuable one too. Is it in good shape? Yeah. Yeah, it's perfect. <coughs> oh, yeah, right. Very nice. Oh, boy. Awesome. The usage started at Civil War age and dropped down into the 1840s. So that last bottle, that black glass whiskey bottle was in the 1840s. Super bottle. So that was a good find. Well, you know, it's the you got the guy that made the product, and you've got the the city that it came from, St. Louis, of course. So you're a St. Louis booster. Yes, you betcha. That's probably about 1860. Or earlier, maybe. Shining already. Thank mm -hmm. you.